Hindsight, Papa. <laughs> I know, I was too busy talking. Hey, y'all, Yeshua Hamashiach in Mikasa, a.k.a. Mi House. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got to finish this. No, that's all my fault. I take full responsibility. All right, we're good. So, anywho, so Brian Moynihan, Brian Moynihan, the CEO of Bank of America. Me Papa had me look you up, and I saw that you're married to a Susan Berry. <laughs> me Papa already knew, but he had me look you up. And you have three fucking kids that are just as worthless as you are, and probably just as worthless as your fucking cunt wife. <laughs> I say it with light love, and just because it's really funny to talk to you idiots like this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I also saw that you went to Brown University, another Ivy League school. Another Ivy League school. I see you hobnob with Trump. I see you hobnob with a bunch of fucking pieces of shit, which, no, no surprise there. No surprise there. I saw that fucking uh, <laughs> another worthless cocksucker that acts like he's all humble as pie and uh, Warren Buffett gave you five billion dollars because you don't have to raise capital I believe was your quote. You have fucking cocksuckers like Warren Buffett in your pocket. Anyway, me papa wanted me to let you know that this is the year you die, Brian Moynihan. And it might be Susan Berry that dies or your three children or all five of you fucking losers. <laughs> Excuse me. You made a very bad mistake, Brian Moynihan. <laughs> Moynihan. Not Monahan. Moynihan. <laughs> Fucking dork. Fucking dork. And you went to Notre Dame, too, so you're a, you know, a fake religious guy. Like every other piece of shit that I'm taking out. <laughs> uh, Senor Moynihan. I just, I look forward to hearing the news about you dying or Susan Berry dying. Or CEO of Bank of America's three children die. Um, that'll be a funny headline for me. Well, they'll be unalived. That's really all that it is. It's not real. <laughs> it's, it's death, but it's actually going to be far worse because they're dealing with the sins of their father. Um, and people don't believe in that shit. Um, unless you break those generational curses, which it does, I don't know what your kids' names are, didn't care to look. Um, <laughs> I do find it funny that Susan Berry um, is probably none too pleased. She probably thinks you're a success. But I highly doubt it. She's probably like, there's another Susan, Susan Woods, who's married to Mike Woods. Another just, you know, wretched bitch that just is the behind the curtain that helps these villainous people. Again, these people's wives, they know what they do. They act stupid, but they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, Papa said there's a few that don't. There's a few that just like spending their money and fucking their tennis coach. So I'll give them that, but... <laughs> and me papa laughs that they're fucking their tennis coaches <laughs> but yet their husbands are too busy to wonder why their tennis game isn't improving <laughs> they've been you've, been you've been going to that tennis coach for 20 years and you still can't serve the ball you know <laughs> are we sure are you sure you have the right guy oh no i have the right guy he's the right coach for me i promise brian he's a great coach he's phenomenal the best i've ever had <laughs> Anyway, I I know that the uh, you know the Tillmans and the you know the Clintons and the Trumps and the you know because all these people are the same. That's where people get confused. They think that Trump is so much different than Joe Biden. Um, they're a little bit different when it comes to the way they approach things. But as far as the fact, or as far as them being demonic and being worthless and evil, it's all the same shit. It's all the same shit. They just come in different packages so that you guys can, you know, or the you know the people in the United States and all over the world can think that it's you know different objectives that they have they all have the same objective and their objective is to try to take out greatness which is me papa and they're not going to do it they're going to fail miserably and they get people like this brian moynihan who's a fucking you know an ivy leaguer at brown and then a notre dame undergrad and just a, and a lawyer by trade naturally he's a lawyer by trade <coughs> excuse me because everything they say about lawyers is true they're all a bunch of blood-sucking sacks of shit <laughs> I've yet to meet one that I could exclude from that. Perhaps I'll find one. We shall see. But anyways, me papa wanted to make a personal message for Brian Moynihan. Um, and really any CEO for any bank. If you're at JP Morgan, if you're wherever the fuck you are. Um, you know, Wells Fargo. Banks all over the world. You, just let, you know, you guys have the same fate as Senior Moynihan. It's not anything special. You know, there's nothing special about these people. I always question, I always say, well, can I say their name? He's like, well, of course, you're the son of God. You know who these people are. They're actual people. 
So <laughs> you kind of, you know, is, you're going to make them famous either way. Anybody that I come encounter, or if I encounter, will be famous. And these people are already famous. They already hang out with these people. So it's not like, you know, I, I would just assume not give them the credit for being evil sacks of shit. But me papa says that's just kind of part of it. You know, this isn't one of those things where you could just go up, shoot them in the head and call it a day and give them no respect. Take them out like the way William Wallace took out the motherfucker that killed his wife. That's sort of how I feel about these people. It's just go up, slit their throat, move on. Don't say a word. It's, you know, it's <laughs> there's no need for the hoopla. You know, no need to build it up. Because it's not personal. None of this stuff is personal from my standpoint. From these people's standpoint, it's very personal. They're very upset. They're very jealous. They're very resentful that the Most High chose me and not them. Which, or chose other people in the Divine Collective and not them. Again, there's 144,000 of us. I just happen to be the Most High Son. And the fact that people get so upset by that when I was Jesus Christ <laughs> and have, have done what I've done in, the, in history and people, they think that I'm just Richard Tillman. That's how stupid these fucking idiots are. That's why they freeze my bank account. That's why they do these things. They can't wrap their head around the fact that this is truly the rapture, which is why I do, don't take any of this stuff personal. It's just, it's part of my job. It's part of what I signed up for. You know, this morning, like I said, when I saw that they seized my bank account or whatever, I, at first I was just like, what the, come on, Papa, and <laughs> what the fuck? And he was just like, don't relax, relax, it's all part of the plan, you know? And he, and I actually had to kind of calm myself down first and sort of say, this is part of the plan. And he was just like, you're getting it now, you're getting it now. Um, because like, everything for me is a test. Everything for me is a test. The, and just the way people behave towards me, that's a test. These people think that they're testing me when it's actually the most high testing me. He knows what they're going to do. He could have given me a heads up that they were going to freeze my account. He chose not to because he wanted to see how long it would take me to just recognize that it's, you know, part of my journey and part of the things that I'm doing and part of the things that he does in the background. And it took me about five minutes, right? Yeah, about five minutes, which I'd like to shorten that up. I'd like to shorten that up. I want to see it immediately and I will now. I mean, the next one will be, you know, pretty much instantaneous because that's what I do. I, my job is to learn for a living. My job is to adapt. My job is to grow. My job is to be a better person. And my job is to ascend to the best version of myself and to recognize every little nuance to this fucking realm and the stupid people that are, you know, right now that think they're controlling it. You know, it says the last will be first and the first will be last. So pretty much everybody in first, I mean, there's no exceptions. All the people that are in these high positions, these you know, these highfalutin people that are senators, congressmen, all these people, they wouldn't be in their positions if they didn't compromise themselves to the fullest, to the absolute fullest. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't be in a position in this world that is very high up unless you sell your soul. There, Like I said, there's few exceptions in like the entertainment industry. There's few exceptions in, uh, you know, like sports, things of that nature. There's, but the majority of it, if you want to get into that upper echelon, like if you want to become a, if you want to go from a punter to being a fucking, you know, <laughs> having a radio show on ESPN, you're going to open your asshole. You're going to open your mouth. You're going to open your soul and you're going to give complete access to demons and they're going to run through you like the fucking loser that you are and the worthless vessel that you are. Um, you know, <laughs> you'd think I was talking about Patrick McCaffrey by that statement and you'd be correct. <laughs> but these people want me to sweat when I get my bank account shut down or I have all these different things. I've been fucked with so much, so much as Richard Tillman or Richard Tillman was fucked with so bad that this stuff, it's more just, again, it's like a nuisance. It's like a gnat in my ear and I, I just get rid of it. And the beautiful thing is I know how to get rid of gnats permanently. So it's not something that even comes back. Once I've noticed it the first time, it's handled, it's taken care of. Richard Tillman did so much work that I, I, it's just very easy for me to adjust and adapt and to, you know, just use the skill sets that Richard Tillman gave me and or I earned and learned as Richard Tillman to, you know, implement to my life as Yeshua HaMashiach. <coughs> Excuse me. I have so many people trying to fuck with me even now that you know, most of them don't, they don't do it in front, nobody does it in front of my face. People didn't do it in front of my face when I was Richard Tillman. These people were fucking terrified. That's what shocks me about them not thinking that I would retaliate when I was Richard Tillman or that I wouldn't look into things. 
I just, I obviously me papa fogged their brain enough, or the, it wouldn't be me papa, me papa wouldn't sabotage them. The devil obviously fogged their brain enough to where they just saw me from such a skewed perspective, or they just assumed be, that I would never be able to wrap my head around the fact that the Tillmans were behind all of my betrayals and sabotages and, and the fact that, and ultimately that they killed Pat. But they also, you know, again, they just don't know, they didn't know what being a chosen one was. They didn't understand the universe, nor did I. But I, thankfully, I wasn't on the side of evil, and I, I never will be. I never have been. Have I done evil shit in past lives, apparently? I guess. That's why some of my stuff was, it was partially karma. I mean, I wrapped a lot of things into this lifetime. That's why it was so difficult. And that's why the lifetime before when I was burned at the stake was so difficult. I take on a lot of my ancestors you know, generational curses and chose to come down and pile all kinds of shit into my story. Excuse me, so I could take it out all in one lifetime, which obviously my eyes were much bigger than my stomach at the time. I mean, I found a way to chew on this shit, but you know, <laughs> I don't recommend. I'll, I'm going to talk to some of the folks that, well, they won't, they won't have to do it again, but <laughs> when we're up there before we come down, everything looks easy because we know it's a game and we know that we're immortal and we know all these different things. But when you're down here, it's so much different. It's just fucking not. It's really, be careful what you order. I mean, Richard Till or whatever, my Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus, ordered a whole lot on, in this lifetime and made it very difficult. Very difficult. But thankfully, I was able to manage, you know. I'm very great. And again, it's because of Richard Tillman that I was able to manage. And, you know, the help from me, Papa, and everything. It's all glory to the Most High God. But... I just have to reiterate to people, man, <laughs> if your life is really fucked up, it might be your own dumb ass that signed up for it. And it, you, it is your dumb ass that signed up for it. And it's karma from past lives and everything else, because it's a luxury for us to come down here. And for me, <laughs> I, I, I really should, I, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm through the lion's share of all of my traumas and torments. This stuff is just sort of, it's for everybody else. It's to see this like Brian Moynihan and all and you know and his poor wife susan barry it's not his poor wife she's just a fucking you marry a fucking piece of shit you're a piece of shit that's how it works you know and when i was married to a piece of shit as richard tillman i was getting the ass like crazy nobody you know i me papa forced me to get away from it and that was part of it you know me papa like rejection is protection when you have things if you want something and it just doesn't go through it's not going through because the most high is protecting you in most instances and a lot of some of them you're just pieces of shit and you're you know you sign a deal with the devil and you know the, a lot of the way i live and the way that i'll teach people how the universe works it's not going to apply to demons and dipshits and witches and warlocks it's not you know they've just done too much <coughs> excuse me it's you can't recover from a lot of the decisions that these people have made like this brian moynihan guy he's done and done that he could repent all the fuck he wants um, you know, me papa said it's just he's gone too far just like, you know, Trump or any of these people I mean Trump was even fucking dumb enough to say that he's all barely Jesus might be more famous than him That's you know, and there's you know what there's a part of that that could could be true uh, and right now But believe me people in the past don't know who Donald Trump was so for him to compare himself to me It was fucking outrageous and for those that don't believe I was Jesus, for him to compare himself to Jesus, that's really fucking absurd. <laughs> because as Jesus, I don't, you know, he, that's the thing. He thinks that fame is everything. He's one of those shitheads who thinks it's all about, that's not how you acquire it, it's that you acquired it. That's not how I roll. That's not how Jesus rolled. I know that because I was him. It's not how, what me papa cares about. That's why the first will be last and the last will be first. The, the the last are in the position that they are because they don't stab people in the back. They don't treat people like shit. They don't cut corners. And when you don't cut corners in the societies that are around the planet right now, you're fucked. You're so fucked because the, you there's just no way around it. It's designed that way. I mean, look at some of the slum areas that people like they force people into poverty, like like the minimum wage and all these different things. Everything changes, but the shit for the uh, well. Everything changes for the better for the elite and the higher ups. You know, that's all they do. And they just oppress people and oppress people. And people will see it. I don't, I don't need to get into that shit. Um, that stuff will work itself out. But there's a reason that the people that people are, are in last place. And it's because they don't aren't willing to kill their brother, kill their friends, kill, you know, whomever. 
rob, pillage, steal, do all this different shit. They're willing to chew on it and believe in the Most High and believe that he has something better for them than what the devil provides, which is, you know, hey, we just, just kill him. There's no cameras. Just do this. There's no cameras. Do this. Actually, you know the guy that runs the cameras, you know, and that's where the Tillmans were. They didn't give a fuck about what they did to Richard Tillman because they felt like they were untouchable. And that's a, the true sign of your character about what do you do when nobody's looking? What do you do when nobody's looking or when you think nobody's looking? Because somebody's always looking. And the Tillmans fuck children, sacrifice animals, sacrifice people, rob, steal, pillage, everything. They just run around like they're in a fucking whorehouse all day, every day. And there's no ramifications, so they thought. But there absolutely are. And they unfortunately did all of this shit on the back of Pat Tillman and his little baby brother, Richard Tillman. And they did it right in front of the Most High God. And they're going to be completely punished and fucking blasted for eternity um, and known for eternity. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, the Tillmans aren't just famous down here. <laughs> and they're going to be, they're very famous in the ethers. Just like all these politicians and all these people that think they're a big deal on planet Earth. Please, fame on planet Earth means fucking nothing. Fame up there, positive fame, that's where the fucking glory is, where you're with the Most High God. When the Most High has your back and fucking will protect you from anybody, that's when you know you're fucking cooking with gas. So I could give a fuck what people think about me down here. I could give a fuck about how people think I do my job and how poorly I do it and how I, you know, they would never do it this way. No, you would never do it. You would never get to where I am. And again, beautiful people of Earth, these are for fucking the demons and dipshits and witches and warlocks that are always coming after me. I love all the beautiful critters I'm here to save. That's why I'm down here to do it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love humanity. And I wouldn't do it if I didn't love the fuck out of me, Papa. And I didn't know that he would protect me. Because the stuff that I signed up for, you know, to have my dad fuck my or fake dad fuck my fake wife, my fake mom fucking everybody I knew, my brother Kevin fucking my fake, and all fake people, by the way. Um, just doing all these horrific things, stealing everything from me, coming after me, poisoning me, you know, <laughs> having my kids taken from me. You know, I signed up for this shit. Obviously, I didn't know the storyline. I had to live it and learn it and figure it out and get my ass out of it. But And Richard Tillman did that. But um, <laughs> obviously, I knew the most high would help me through it or because who the fuck would sign up for that? <laughs> A warrior, that's for sure. A fucking warrior would sign up for that. And again, that goes to all the ones of the Divine Collective. People think that we're chosen by just the life that we lived as we were living it. No, we. that's one of the reasons that people think the Most High works through really weird types of people like me. People think it's really weird that I'm Yeshua Hamashiach. Um, no, it's not weird at all. I was Jesus, and he put Jesus in the craziest fucking situation you could ever imagine. To, <laughs> hello, uh, to see <laughs> to see what he would do, you know. They wanted to see what he would do. <laughs> that scared the shit out of her. She didn't see me at all and was like, bah, bah. Um, but that was it. He wanted to see what, or my job was to <laughs> see what I, you know, to pull it off. He knew that I was capable of doing it, um, but people don't. That's the thing. They sorry. <laughs> now she's just staring back, going, "What is that, Jesus?" Yes, I am, lady. Ooh. But I go by Yeshua now. But anyway, that's what why people have a hard time understanding it. Because my soul is what gets me through it. My belief in myself, the fact that I am Jesus, you could put me in any of these fucking situations and I can figure it out. And I can, you know, did I make mistakes? Of course I did. I'm in a fucking human body. We're designed to make mistakes. And that's what I'm here to teach people. That's why I commented on that guy that says, you know, well, if you remarried and your ex, your spouse is still alive, then you're going to burn in hell. That's not true. There's so many different caveats to why the divorce happened and why, you know, just what was going on. Not every story is the exact same. I Me, mean, Papa doesn't punish everybody the exact same with a lot of different things. You know, the bubble, the, bu the bubble, the Bible has just, you know, very s specific, strict guidelines to different things. Some of them are accurate. Some of them are not. <clears throat> Excuse me. M me, Papa has an individual relationship with me, and it shows when you watch these videos. A lot of what you see is what I'm here to teach and what I'm here to discern, and that's how I know what I'm here to teach. And what I'm here to teach is be a good human being. Know that your relationship with him is unique. Just make sure that you're having a unique relationship. Uh, you know, don't just fucking bury your head in the Bible and go off of everything strictly from that. 
You know what good is, you know what right is, you know what wrong is. Stick to those things. Be willing to make mistakes, be willing to accept that you made those mistakes, be willing to repent for those mistakes, you know, apologize for those mistakes, be honest about the mistakes you make, keep pushing, keep trying to be the best that you can. I mean, if you go off of the Bible, you'll never be great. You'll be too fucking scared to make a mistake. You'll be too scared to do anything. You just are worried about a lightning bolt coming at you and that's not how me papa works. You know, it's all, that's why your intentions are so important. When you are trying to do the right thing and you're trying to strive and be better and you know, that's what me papa cares about. It's all, this is a testing ground, it's a school, it's a university. So for people to say you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, a lot of things aren't good for you and that I will completely agree with. <coughs> Excuse me, my little smoking habit, like things like that, you know, just even when I would have drinks where now I have, I, like I said, I'm not interested in that at all anymore. Um, like I said, it doesn't mean I won't have a glass of wine or something, but, and I said that before, but this is a completely different thing. I'm, that part is done for me. Um, except for, like I said, if my sweet divine soul, maybe wanted to have a glass of wine or whatever. And I, you know, maybe I'd drink a bottle or a drink too. I don't fucking care. I just don't say never to that, but it's not going to be something that I'm just bored and just going to have a cocktail or I'm celebrating something. So I'm just going to have a cocktail and just make excuses up for shit because I enjoy myself. I have a higher standard for myself now and I'm going to continue to raise the bar for myself. You know, like I said, I'm going to kick the smoking when it's time to kick the smoking. It's getting there. It's like I said, they taste like shit more than they ever have in my life. But again, me papa's not going to smash a lightning bolt up my ass because I, you know, have a cigarette. You know, that's, and I'm the son of God. Obviously, he knows that I still deal with very heavy pressure stuff that even I don't feel it that way. But he re reminds me of that. Like, as me, to me, I'm just like, you know, if I have a smoke, I'm just having a smoke. And he's like, dude, you have so much shit going on in your body as because it's a human body. So there's so much stress that I deal with that I don't even realize I deal with it because Richard Tillman made me so fucking strong. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't, <laughs> I don't really feel it. Me papa's like, it's there, it's there. And that's, it's interesting. He gives me more slack about my smoking than I do, which is really awesome to me. And that's something, again, I go off of how he treats me with what I teach other people and what I share with other people. Because he knows the effort that I put into everything that I do. He knows that I'm not trying to scapegoat things. He knows I'm not trying to make excuses for anything. He knows that I'm just doing the best that I can all the time. And he also knows that everybody on the planet is trying to kill me. And he's, <laughs> he knows that I don't want to smoke around my sweet divine soulmate baby. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to laugh if she's totally cool with it. That'll make it really hard if, you know, but no, I don't. <laughs> but I really don't. I don't want to smoke mostly for kids. I don't want kids to think that it's, uh, you know, it's cool because <laughs> it is. I really do think it is, but it's terrible for you. Don't do it. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> but anyways, I have to use my discernment on the way that the Most High treats me and the way he teaches me and the way he shows things. That's why I'm here to fucking flip things on its head. Because the, like I said, the Bible's just way too strict on certain things that don't matter. Things that, and then these little fake righteous motherfuckers that have never been laid are talking about how oh, this will put you in hell and this will do this. No, talking out of your ass and, you know, acting like you are, are the authority on the Bible, that'll get your ass killed. That'll get you fucking smoked. Unless the Most High gives you the authority to speak about him, you should shut the fuck up. I mean, you could talk to people about the Most High. He loves that. But when you demand shit like I do and you're not me, your papa's like, who the fuck are you doing, Larry? You're supposed to, what the fuck, just dig the hole and shut the fuck up, you know? He doesn't have everybody speaking for him because he doesn't want everybody speaking for him. People aren't qualified to speak for the Most High God. Joel Alstein's not qualified. That's why he's going to get his ass handed to him. T.D. Jakes, he already had his ass handed to him by P. Diddy. <laughs> but he's going to get more. He's going to get more. If he likes his asshole blown up, believe me, me ancestors and me archangels, T.D. Jakes, that ass is going to be fucking, you're not going to be able to walk. Um, <laughs> and you'll probably love it. Are we here to punish him or fucking get him off? Um, anyway, they'll find something that, <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, that's a great point. We won't blow his asshole up. He loves it. <laughs> oh, TD Jakes, you fucking silly bastard. <laughs> Excuse me. But anyway, just a ramble scramble. Just, you know, I, I like to just pop on. It started with this Brian Moynihan of, you know, <laughs> Brown University fame and Notre Dame and, you know, CEO of Bank of America. Again, you get that by sucking the devil's dick and, you know, hanging out with Donald Trump and Warren Buffett. 
and once again, people talk about Warren Buffett. I keep saying once again, whatever. I'm going back to my old habits. But uh, Warren Buffett, who goes, oh, he's married to the same woman, lives in the same small house in Nebraska. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll find out about Warren Buffett. We'll find out about all his fucking secrets and his degenerate ways. You know, again, why, what, not again, but why would somebody like Warren Buffett, who, does he just fucking hate his wife? Because he's working his ass off. He's got like eight minutes to live. And all he does is fucking work and try to get more money and more money. But money's not important, apparently, to him. But yet he, ha he hoards it and has all of it. Uh, <laughs> and hangs out with the most evil people on the planet. That's not an accident. You know Warren Buffett is on the fucking Epstein list. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. They're not even going to say, yeah, they're, I'm sure of it. They're not confirming or denying because they don't have to. I guarantee you Warren Buffett is, was fucking children over there. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If not, sue me, Warren. Sue me. <laughs> but you're not going to get anything because my, account, my bank accounts are seized because of Brian Moynihan. Fucking clowns. But that's, <laughs> that's these people. They come after me. The whole world comes after me and they want me to be shitting my pants and be freaking out. I don't fucking care. I, <laughs> I work for the Most High God. And not only do I work for the Most High God, I'm fucking me. And I love being me. And I love slinging shit at you fucking losers. I love that you try to attack me. I love that you guys are trying to kill me. I think it's fucking great. It makes it a lot of fun. It's not nearly as fun when you're, I was Richard Tillman because I had no idea what was going on. It was quite terrifying and scary and everything else. But now, it's a fucking hoot. <laughs> I'm having a whale of a time. It's so good. It's so much fun because ultimately, I know I just get to take out all the fucking trash. You know, to quote Donald Trump, I'm here to clean out the swamp. <laughs> I'm here to clean out all the fucking swamps. And Donald Trump will be a part of that swamp. <laughs> Uh, people have no fucking idea what's coming, and that's fun for me. Very, very fun for me. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, the point's been made about old fucking Brian Moynihan and his wife, Susan Barry, and their three children that are going to end up dead. Um, or, you know, again, it's all just going to be a horrific ending. I don't care if they are unalived or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't care what happens to them at all. I just know that they're going to get judgment on them because I just called it, and I know that <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Well, <laughs> whatever me papa refers to as time, it will happen when it happens. But these people want me to wake up scared when they shut down my account or, you know, take my money and do this, that, or the other. Have fun. Have fun. You, you can laugh now, but I can assure you, you'll be crying later. Excuse me. Most of you motherfuckers are crying right now. You guys know how stupid it is to fuck with me. But you keep doing it because you're too just you're just too fucking stupid. You're just too fucking stupid. So, anyways, that's my ramble scramble. Um, <laughs> I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. <laughs> Anywho, it's all about Yahweh all day, every day. Bye bye. <whistles> Sweet divine soul, my baby. All the fucking minis. World. All the fucking minis. Uh, Senor Moynihan. <laughs> with light and love, of course. Uh, Susan Berry, <laughs> you done fucked up by Barry and that cocksucker. Um, and your three children. Um, you should be very proud of your papa. That he got Jesus Christ to speak about how big of a piece of shit he is when he was Yeshua HaMashiach. So, you could take that to hell in the bank. <laughs> oh, banking puns to the CEO of the Bank of America. <laughs> but um, sh they say. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, kids. Till the next video. I'm sure it'll be sooner than later because these motherfuckers are just asking for it. All right. <laughs> Why is that? That's funny. I'm not going to sing that. No. <laughs> I'll sing it to you guys after. All right, I got to sing to me, ancestors. I'll be chatting with you. Peace.